Welcome back to the Wolf of Queen Street podcast series. Welcome back to the audio podcast or the video series. Before we get into today's episode, I'd just like to introduce and talk about the sponsor for about 30 seconds. The sponsor for the show is The Six Figure Secrets, a business that is teaching people how to run their business successfully, how to grow successfully, and how to take the next steps to reach the goals they want to get to. They are a team of guys and girls that are not just that have not just consumed books, following everyone else's model, and you know, saying do this without doing the examples themselves. They have failed plenty of times, but they've learned from that, and now they're teaching others how to go across that. They don't take bullshit. They don't go and follow the normal box in the route. And funny enough is myself and my guest Ezra on the show today were actually in one of the masterminds just a couple of weeks ago where we had a, a discussion safe to get Ezra on the show because that's the sort of program we want to be in where both our brands want to grow. And the Six Figure Secrets is the, the place that has taken us to that next level. If that sounds like something you are interested in, something you like, go and see them at the sixfigursecrets.co. But um, I just want to welcome my guest on the show, Ezra Bush, the dance entrepreneur, the dance entrepreneur, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah. This guy, I uh, reached out a couple of months ago, actually, no, more than a couple of months ago, you know, Blink and this year is already gone. The end of last year, and what I saw about him is he's a dance coach, he's inspiring youth, and he's inspiring learning through our youth by using dance programs. And when I looked at his social media and I see him going onto the stages and having 1,500 people at this one city in Australia and 2,500 kids in this stadium and see them motivated, jumping around and dancing, I was like, there's got to be something there. And then being able to put my own kids through some of his programs just in the last couple of weeks and looking at their reaction to what he's doing, I'm like, this man is doing the right thing. Ezra, welcome to the show. Hey, Lawrence. Thanks for having me, man. Super pumped to be here with the wolf himself. To the Mr. Wolf himself. Thanks, mate. So an interesting thing is before we get into, you know, where you are today and uh, the dance mm -hmm. curriculum and the program that you're doing, an interesting thing to do is to, to notice is Ezra, uh, without, you know, he's a skinny white dude, but he's got the moves today. He can do, he can lock and pop and do all the R&B stuff that you can do and you see on any music video that you see out there today. But interesting enough, when he started, Sorry, Ez, he was shit. And he would openly admit that he was pretty bad of unknowing how to dance and how to do the moves. But it was great to see his journey. And I'll let him explain it a bit, that how the hard work and the focus, not over six months, not over one year, but sort of I think it was 10 or 12 years led to what we got to today of being able to achieve the success in something that he was never good at. Is that not the case? That is definitely, absolutely the case. Yeah, I was terrible when I first started. But um, so, so how I first got into it was uh, I was stomping around uh, in my family's bathroom because I loved the way that my feet sounded when they hit the floor. And mum busts into the bathroom. She's like, what are you doing? I'm just like, ah, um, I'm dancing. She's like, mm, you're not just dancing. You sounds like you're trying to tap dance. I was like, okay. Well, she was like, do you want me to maybe take you to a class if you practice and if you work hard, maybe one day you might get pretty good at it. So I was like, yep. And little did I know is that right then and there, she instilled what's called a growth mindset in me, which is basically a belief about a skill mm -hmm. that you can attain it through hard work and through focused practice instead of natural talent. Then fast forward about two years later, I was absolutely terrible. I mean, I really do mean I, I was stand out worse than the class, like just terrible. Um, no one wanted to dance with me because it was just not a pretty sight. But after about nine years of, of constant practice, I got pretty good. And then after 12 years, I had the good fortune of been approached to be a part of an um, internationally touring show called the Hot Shoe Shuffle. Mm -hmm. And I didn't end up taking them up on the offer because I was in my last year of high school, having fun with my friends. And I just really wanted to, to focus on having an awesome last year of high school. And I thought, you know what? A professional dance career is always going to be there. Um, and, but what, it, what that did was it filled me with so much confidence, knowing that I had worked so hard and being so terrible for so long <laughs> at something and finally broke through. And getting approached by the, the show was definitely a huge a huge boost in my confidence so uh, yeah that, that was sort of how i started and how i got good at, at dancing yeah no it's it's amazing and you know to anyone listen 12 years 
That's not a year. That's not six months. That's not two years. That is 12 years of focus of, on something that passionate about, enjoyed, but openly can admit was not good at. Mm-hmm. We see that we see too much in today's life where people go, Hey, I'm really passionate about this. I really enjoy doing this. I want to give it a go. And then three months later, they go, Oh no, it's too hard. Or six months later, they go, Oh no, it's too hard. And you know, uh, where you've put it in 12 years to get where you get to. And so you look at a lot of other entrepreneurs and other successful businessmen and women, it's the same story. Like people want to jump on their bad wagon of success in the last year, but not realizing the hours and the hours and the hours that they've put in for years and years beforehand. Uh, funny enough, myself and Ezra were just talking about um, the hat I'm wearing is TMT, it's the money team, by a gentleman called Floyd Mayweather, whether you enjoy him or not. And he was sort of the king of that, of... He had all the success and all the money and everything when, uh, everyone loved him. You loved him or you hated about him, but he didn't realize this, the 40, 60, 80 hour weeks he did every single week, 52 weeks a year for th- was it 20 years his career went into. Um, everyone just saw the, the, the fun stuff at the end. And uh, I think okay. it's a struggle we have in our society and a struggle we have today's culture where there's so much noise going around that we're unable to get the kids and the youth to focus long enough and on something they're passionate about to keep going that when they're 25 or 28 or 29, they can turn around and go, I gave it 10 years, but now I'm exceptionally well off successfully. It doesn't mean from a monetary point of view, but I'm successfully well off on my career path in my early 20s. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, what, yeah, you see all the flashy things that Floyd has mm. done. And I, I remember seeing a documentary on him once he had just gone out night clubbing and it was like 2 a.m. in the morning yep. and all his friends were, you know, absolutely anemic. <laughs> they were just gone, but he doesn't drink. And yep. instead he actually just left his friends and went to the gym to go training at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. in the morning. I thought, man, that's just a level of dedication. That's just crazy, right? Totally. Totally agree with that. Yeah. You know, so at the end of, you know, you finish high school, uh, mm-hmm. you get approached to your, your dance program. You know, there was something that a couple of years, or was it just recently after that, that you looked into start with a friend of yours called the Dance Curriculum that you guys are running at the moment. Take us through that journey. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a, a, a time bridge, I guess, to to fill in. So uh, after I'd been approached by the, the show, mm-hmm. I decided to finish off my last year in high school and I shot over to Sydney, Australia to pursue a career dancing professionally. I remember walking into my first audition. It was just an open audition. So for those of you who don't know, an open audition basically is a casting call where anyone can walk up. Mm -hmm. You don't need an agent or a connection. So I was 19 at the time, didn't really, I was like, yeah, cool. All right, I'm there. Open audition, that's me. And inside the room were all of these people um, that had just finished their dance degree, whether it was at, you know, uh, the Melbourne University whether it was at Brent Street, a famous dance school, you know, they were all from there. And I asked, yep. and I asked them, you know, oh, you, you guys must be professional dancers. And they were like, no, we're struggling just like you. We, mm. we, we're, we're here just to get here just like you are. Like, we don't have any work. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. So what did you go to uni for for, like, the last three years? <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened? And so when we walked in, I thought that that would be, you know, just, just year, light years ahead of, Mm -hmm. Uh, me dance wise but what I soon realized was is like man a a lot of the qualifications that we're getting are really when it comes down to it I kind of not that useful especially in the dance space it really is about who you know how to Mm -hmm. network and how to build personal relationships and all of your soft skills so I I I learned pretty quickly uh how to sort of network I made made a space myself dancing professionally but it wasn't up until it was up until uh, we, my best friend at the time, who was our national Australian ballroom champion, he's my now my business partner as well. His name's Dean Langham. Mm-hmm. We were at an education conference that a teacher friend invited us to, and the person on stage talked about the power of a growth mindset. And finally, I had a label for all of my success and my belief in, in my ability to be able to improve my skills in dancing. And I realised that I could soon actually map that onto to a business. That I could that I wasn't just a dancer. Mm-hmm. I was I could be more than that. I could actually be an entrepreneur and actually help people and, and provide something of value to the world. So we also found out that a lot of children are are built up 
believing that they have fixed talents that this is the way I am. I've always only been good at sports. I can only be good at sports. I can't be academic or vice versa. I, you know, they'll believe that maybe they can't dance or they Mm -hmm. can't sing or they can't do some kind of skill that if they knew they could do it, they would actually give it a go. So that's why we decided to found dance curriculum, which is basically our mission is to help kids fall in love with learning through dance Mm -hmm. and inspire a growth mindset and teach people about it. So here we are. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's amazing to see what you actually, like I said, what you're doing and the programs you've put together because that's been going since 2014, give or take. That's it. Yeah, yeah. The, the company's been through a few name changes. Yeah. We first were called Stepping Out and then yeah. people thought that we sold shoes to school. So we decided yeah. <laughs> to change it to dances for school and then they thought we ran after school programs. So finally we've landed on dance curriculum, which, mm-hmm. is, um, which is where we're at, which is yeah, we, we help teachers and principals put on massive shows for mums and dads yep. um, by combining the whole school and a full school uh, dance program that, that culminates in a concert. We'll even get dads just like you, Lawrence, up and <laughs> dancing with their kids. Dude, I'm way too big to be dancing, mate. Large mammals like me. Large mammals, <laughs> large mammals like me don't move easy. Um, but you yeah. know, talking talking about it, you know, just 2014, we're 2020 now. Uh, we'll talk about and mm. some stats and numbers. And I know I pulled yep. this from a, a good friend of ours, but. 220,000, I think, is the number you've said around about how many kids you've put through your program in six years. Yes, that's, that's totally correct. Yeah, yeah. So we've had the good fortune of reaching out to, yeah, well over 220,000 kids. Mm-hmm. And um, it's amazing what you, what you see, the, the amount of growth that children can experience mentally and their confidence within such a short period of time would absolutely blow your mind. And it definitely has blown mine. I mean, we've, we, we now have the good fortune of working with schools all the way down in Invercargill to the North Shore of Auckland, mm-hmm. East and West Auckland, every, every city in between, um, and also all over Australia now as well. So it's amazing to see, you know, even though, you know, culturally children will come from different backgrounds, yeah. dance really is something that unifies us as, as a species, yeah. It totally does. It doesn't matter on your background, your race, you know, your mm. upbringing, I, I truly believe it. Or your size. Or your size. Maybe <laughs> size. Maybe <laughs> size. Just, maybe size. Um, <laughs> it's definitely something where everyone can come in and, and give it a go. Now, sort of your program that you're doing in now and offering your schools and when you do yeah. the big shows, is that sort of junior school base or is it all the range between junior and up to high school? Yeah, so we've decided to really focus on primary school. And what that means is from year one, so five years old, yep. up into 13 years of age, up into year eight. Uh, we've found that that's where we can make the most impact. There's some really great high school programs and high schools have teachers that can help students that want to pursue performing arts. But when I think of what I would love for, I don't have any kids now that I know of, but if I was to think about what kids, what I want my kids to um, have uh, in an education experience is when they're younger to be exposed to as many different things as possible Mm -hmm. so that when they're a little bit older in their teens, they can choose what to pursue with an open mind. Yeah. So that's why we decided to to get primary schools on board with our program. And so those are the people that we serve as as primary school age children. Yeah. That's great. I, I, Totally agree with, you know, the mentality around it. By the time we get to teenagers, if they haven't been introduced, it's very rarely that it comes, a, a teenager is going to be, has, have his or her mind changed. You know, mm. a 16 or 17 year old guy or girl ain't going to just change their mind if some random guy comes up and says, oh yeah, you got to do dance. They're like, yeah, mm. fuck off. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely at a young age, you implement it. And if they pick it up, it's skills they'll take on forever and it's skills they'll learn and um, the hard work and dedication. So I think it's a, a great idea and strategy from the business. Yeah. So as you guys, you're saying, obviously you're Australian based um, or through Australia and New Zealand, the majority of the time you are crossing Australia and sometimes in New Zealand. How do you, how do you make it work if you, you know, you're trying to achieve 20,000 kids or 40,000 kids a year? Or, you know, between yourself and um, Dean, you guys splitting your time between the two different countries. How does that work? Yeah. So we, yeah, we're really lucky. Like we started in New Zealand, so we're a New Zealand based company for sure. Uh, so we have two awesome teaching, 
staff members and friends. Uh, one of them's called B Boy Marky Mark, <laughs> and um, he's a young Filipino boy from Wellington, and so he takes care of a lot of, a lot of our Wellington schools. Mm-hmm. And uh, in twenty eighteen, Mark won the um, Hip Hop International One on One All Stars Battle, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, so he qualified to represent New Zealand for that. And our other uh, friend and teaching staff member is a gentleman by the name of Omar from Prestige Crew. So I, I, do you know Prestige Crew? Have you heard about them? Or? I think I've heard of them. Heard of them. Yeah. Yep. So Prestige Crew came third in, world, in the uh, Hip Hop International World a couple of years ago. They're sort of the, the top three boys crews of, mm-hmm. of dancing in, in New Zealand. So they're really cool. He's a super stylish, cool dude. And we really wanted to provide schools with male role models that kids could really look up to and, yep. and to approach the arts with an open mind. And so uh, that's a lot of feedback that we've been getting is that, you know, schools are really craving male role models because mm-hmm. over 80% of, of teachers are females and over 80% of solo parents are females as well. So yep. I think primary kids really need that in their lives. Yeah. And it's great to, to see that, you you know, you've implemented other people within your team to allow you guys to mm. make sure you go spread out and impact as many, most, as many kids as possible. Totally. So, sort of, so sorry, I, I should have actually answered your question a little bit more directly. So how do we, how do we cover 20,000 kids? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, the, the cool thing about our program is it's really scalable. And mm-hmm. I think large schools love us because we make a really tricky thing, which is putting on a colossal community show really easy for teachers. You know, teachers want to have fun with their kids, connect with them, but not have dance be a stressful thing to teach. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, teaching dance is really hard for teachers to do because they're not, you know, they're, they're not dancers, <laughs> they're teachers. Yeah. yeah, so we can have uh, up to about 800 children run through our program on a given day. So that's one staff member can teach up to 800 kids. So and one of the biggest... And physically the teacher in front of 800 kids. So we would we scaffold it so that it's to ability. So we yep. would teach the juniors over a couple of sessions, mm-hmm. about you know a couple of thirty minute sessions. Then we'd do a couple of sessions with the middle syndicates, and then a couple of sessions with the seniors. Mm-hmm. So something that's a little bit different to other programs is that ours is actually based on the New Zealand curriculum. Yep. So we actually save teachers loads of time in providing their children with an education experience and been able to mark them as well. So it's sort of ticks a couple of boxes for the teachers as well as the kids yeah no that's amazing and sort of your expectation around this and as you're going into schools is it a short term Mm. per year or is it a continuation delivery of learning mechanism and dancing throughout the whole year yeah i remember coming across this question when i first started the company because you know a lot of people a lot of people were telling us one of two things the first thing was to try and get a government grant to roll our program all over new zealand and the second thing that they were saying was you need you need to have an ongoing program that goes throughout the year because that's the you know otherwise you're going to have to get more and more schools on board and i remember having a long hard think to myself thinking far out it is a lot easier to do those two things to try and just chase a government grant and to also try and have a continuous program but that sort of went against our beliefs of of especially the, with an ongoing program having like i said before lawrence we want kids to have as many different experiences yep. in primary schools as possible so if we can have a short-term immersive experience where children really get to get into dance for a couple of weeks mm-hmm. then they can experience something else a little bit later on in the year and they can become more well-rounded individuals so we still definitely have some ongoing programs so like our online presence mm-hmm. and we teach free teacher development workshops and things like that but our, our program is primarily for entire schools to get on board with for a couple of weeks at a time running daily lessons that culminate in a massive show at the end yeah no, that's awesome. I love that. And I love how you've, you know, you've thought it through as much as the business opinion has told you to do one thing. Your journey along was to make sure that young kids have as experienced as much as possible through yeah. the, you know, seven, eight, nine into their preteens before they go to high school. And you stuck to your guns as much as people said, hey, do a whole year program, do it this mm-hmm. way. You stuck to your guns and going, I'm going to give them that opportunity, but I'm going to give it to them in such a way that they're going to like it or not going to like it, but I'm not going to over consume them so that 
I take away from one or two other opportunities they might have had in the same time period. So yeah. I, you know, I, I definitely respect that uh, about how you, you stuck to truthfully what you wanted to do to impact these kids. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it was super tempting as well because you know that way I would have only had to have grown my business into just a couple of schools, mm -hmm. and it would have been quite small and you know really profitable and stuff. But that's not what we're solely about. You know, we want to make a big impact all over New Zealand, and so obviously having a program that only goes for a couple of weeks means that we have to get lots and lots of schools on board. So it puts, puts a bit of healthy pressure on us as a company to be able to provide more value to more people. So we're really happy about it. The second part was about giving, getting uh, government grants for it. Now on, on the, the face of it, it sounds like a really great idea because it's free for everyone. And, and you know, it's just a, an easy way to roll things out. But if the past is an indication of the future, what happens is every new election cycles, governments want to be seen as, doing things right and making progress so quite often they will change their providers of sports programs and different kinds of programs so we decided very early on that we were going to put the power in the school's hands and let them choose to work with us if they wanted to and so we're really happy that we did that yeah that's great now to any you know to anyone that's listening at the moment any parents a lot of my fans and so forth are parents with young kids and they're listening out and they're going to great we you know we're australia we're new zealand based what's the sort of and we haven't come across the dance curriculum and some of them might say hey we mm. we've got some lineups in our schools or we've got connections at the moment so there'll be there'll be two questions from them going okay our kids are at home at the moment as they are they will be for some time until we transition everyone back what is the process for them if they want to reach out to you and go Hey, you know, um, Ezra, we would love, you know, if you could come do an hour or two hours over a couple of weeks for the said school. What is that sort of process for anyone to reach out about that engagement for the schools? Yeah, totally. So I think, so I think for now we're, we're putting our face-to-face -face in school programs on pause for a little bit. Yep. Um, but in the future for, for later in the year or potentially next year, if you wanted to reach out to us, um, just jump onto our website. It's dancecurriculum.com.au. Mm -hmm. and um, fill out a lead form and I'll personally actually contact you and reach out to you to see how you might like to work together. Uh, in the meantime though, to get people moving, we've actually decided to launch an online program and Lawrence, your kids have been doing yep. it. So yep. how's it been as a dad sitting back and watching your kids get into it? I oh, know they definitely enjoying it. There's, there's some components that they love and there's some components mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's what, 20 or 25 or 30 minutes. It's intense. They get into it. So it's, yeah. it's strange because as soon as they're done, they'll get into it, enjoy it, and then they'll have a whole fun and they'll get out and finish. And I look at my kids and I go, it's as if they went and had a, had a run down the road. Because as <laughs> yeah. much as they're standing and they're having a good time, they don't realize they're standing there for 30 minutes continuously moving, moving mm. the arms and their legs and doing all these weird movements or trying to do these weird movements. Because to anyone uh, listening and watching, Ezra and Dean or Ezra himself shows all the moves and he talks through it and the music they self right. So it's not someone else doing it. He talks through and takes the kids through a really well mannered program and shows this is how we do this move. This is how we do this sort of move and gives them their time. And they've, they've been thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and both, like I said, both my kids enjoy one component different to another one. Yeah. Um, your, your, I don't know what's can't remember what's called your copy movement one. Uh, when you have to copy with your moves, um, they yeah, have yeah. a bit of they have a bit of a laugh, but you know yeah. your movements are a little bit more uh, <laughs> seasoned and well versed. So, I, I, um, as your program said, a parent has to join in. So my kids are like, "Okay, Dad, come sit in." So I sat yeah. in on the I sat in the one session. We did the moves, and I'm like, I'm watching you on the video, and your arms are up here, and my arms are like down here, and I'm just like, "No, nah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have no skills in that section." But yeah, yeah. But but saying that as a parent and the program, they thoroughly enjoying and loving it, and. And it was really great to see, like I said, at the end of it, at how much it seemed like, firstly, they learned, they were doing something fun, they thoroughly enjoyed, but it was, it was also exercise for them. You know, afterwards, they're like, oh, I need some water, I'm a bit tired. And I was like, that's great. You know, with especially the situation we are at the moment where we don't have as much interaction or movement around because of kids being at home. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was our intention to help kids connect with their families. And so we were sort of thinking, you know, how do we do that with me from a screen? I, you know, I'm not, I'm not live there doing it in person. 
So did you get a chance to play some of the, the dance games with them? That's on no, day so, five. Yeah, if you had yeah, no, we ha- no, we haven't gotten into that yet. Um, so uh, yeah. we had a couple of busy yeah. days across the weekend. So we'll get across that. What I wanted to do, because I had a, you know, the, the, a week or seven day program. I didn't want to do seven days. I'm trying to do like yeah. a day, a couple of days and then a day. But I throw the, um, Ezra's got, the video itself, the full dance, I throw that in in between so they can just rehearse it normally. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Be warned, day five, dad's <laughs> dance. <so. laughs> okay, if I tell my daughter that now, nah, she's going to be like, we're doing that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, let's crack up. I don't know if I shot myself in the foot just then, but yeah, day five, yeah. dad's dance. Yeah. So, you know, just to end off um, today, uh, as we said mm-hmm. about this amazing program, obviously the school program, you know, that's, that's a bit of hold at the moment. You said you've got the online yeah. program. What's the journey yes. for parents? What's the journey for anyone that's got young kids at the moment that would love to see what it's about to get onto your online space and look, uh, take a look at that program? Is that public yeah. arts at the moment? Yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. So we'll uh, leave a link in the podcast description. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like to find out more or like to jump on board with the program, yep. uh, I think we've priced it at something like just seven bucks per kid. So yep. If you want to jump on to the link and we'll be able to get you signed up straight away and get your kids moving and get dads grooving. That's amazing. I know I've got a, a few contacts and a few friends with kids and I spoke to them already last week about it and they're pretty excited because uh, I've already sent them the, the original video. So they're like, cool, waiting mm. for the program and they'll be excited to hear yeah. about that. And it's an amazing, like I said, $7 a kid for the program. So with, with the program at the moment is what's the future part of it that it's going to keep growing and and more sections added to it or what's your thoughts? Yeah, this is the beauty of being online because we can track everybody's success, reach out to them directly and get Mm -hmm. feedback. So like Lawrence, with your unique login that you've been given, I can see exactly how many times you played the videos, you know, and if I see that you've played one video over and over again, I can directly contact you saying, you know, did you? Are you finding it too hard or do you just love it? Is that why you're, you know, repeating it? So after we've gathered lots of feedback from thousands of people that are already on board with the program, we're going to be able to make another one even bigger and even better. And I think you skimmed over it briefly, but we actually write and produce our own songs at Dance Curriculum. So it's our mission to help children all over the world fall in love with learning and become the most confident leaders that they can be. So the way that we've done that is by also producing our own songs. So we're going to have brand new, fresh tracks um, with empowering messages for kids and we're going to make it even bigger and even better. But yeah, that's, that's what's up. Oh man, I love it. Uh, there's, there's nothing more I can say other than I'm a massive fan and I shout out, I uh, love your brand and, and so forth. And it's very few times you know, going around that when you get on board with something that as a parent, you know, you fully want to support and you fully want to, you know, support the other business. And especially at the moment, like that whole drive of supporting local, right? A New Zealand business trying mm-hmm. to achieve and uh, make the change the lives of our kids. And to anyone that's listening out there across our New Zealand, Australian space, even if you're overseas outside of the New Zealand, Australian space, the program is still there. You used to, it's still a digital program. You can reach that as well. By all means, please uh, reach out. But before we um, end off the show, Ezra, can you let our listeners know where can they find you um, over the next week or two weeks, social handles and so forth? Yeah, awesome. So we're across all social media platforms at Dance Curriculum. So it's yeah, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok as well. If you've got a couple of moves you want to show us. And um, yeah, looking forward to, to hearing from some of you and um, yeah, connecting with more people. That's awesome. Um, thank you so much, Ezra. And to everyone else, as always, has come over to the Wolf of Queen Street, the podcast series, the audio or the video series. I say, if there's something that resonates with you today, there's something that you felt was important to yourself or that could be important to someone else, send that to someone else or tell them to come on over and come have a watch or come and listen because for them at that moment, it might change them. It might be important to him or her. But at the end of the day, stay beautiful, stay powerful. Until next time, see ya.